Hello and welcome back to Volumes. In this episode, I spoke with Greg Hall. Um, this is three weeks into isolation, and we kind of spoke about isolation and what's going on there. Uh, hope you enjoy it, and uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Greg, thank you for coming back on to Volumes podcast by Tom Gibson, uh, the best podcast uh, and then, like ever. I think it's just the best podcast. That's what I've been told, right? That's, it's just really good. Thank you, Tom Gibson of the podcast Volumes for having me. <laughs> um, I have reoccurring guest Greg Hall here today, uh, also known as The Field Healed. Um, incredible, talented individual, makes great content. This is so strange. I'm not going to lie. This feels so strange. It's so, like, quite, it's, it's very, very different. Like yeah. one of my pals did this recently where he did like a, he did a video podcast with like a, a content creator in Canada and he's based just outside of Edinburgh. And I think he was up at like three in the morning to do this like video interview thing. So but like, strange. it's just a strange concept because like we're used to doing this face to face. Yeah. And like but, looking in each other's eyes and actually having like intimate feedback that's, Mm. genuine and it feels a bit strange it feels a bit dystopian like and un- and then we can't even like take a photo after it or anything like that like, no, yeah, it's just well, gonna be like- yeah exactly i was thinking about this i was thinking if i do any more <laughs> of these right with new people and every time i have a new person i take a polaroid of them i was thinking do i need to just take a polaroid of the screen oh. <laughs> like <laughs> it's gonna suck um but yeah greg we are uh three weeks this is like exactly three weeks today yeah it's three weeks today that we kind of got told like yeah that this is it no one is ever gonna breathe real oxygen again uh that that kind of only really seems to apply to like a very select group of people that it seems which is quite strange that there's still people going like beaches and parks and stuff like that Mm, yeah i mean it applies to everyone but some people are like no no that doesn't apply to me (laughs) No, 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 I still want to have fun. I need alcohol, I need to go outside. I don't mind if everyone dies because of me. (laughs) I don't mind if I am the number one cause of spreading this pandemic. I got to see my BFF, though, LML. (laughs) Awful power. Um, But yeah, yeah, three weeks. Three weeks is pretty wild. How are you finding it? Um, I'm alright, to be honest. I'm keeping myself busy in that, so... I'm not, I'm, busy in I'm, what sense? Busy in the sense that um, I've recognised that productivity during this time is very different. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of just trying to keep myself productive in a way that I recognise, but is also kind of like applicable to like what we're going through just now. So like I'm just like I'm rearranging all my stuff. Like I'm I'm buying and selling stuff online and that. I'm playing through games that I've never had a chance to play through and that. Mm. And, like, I've got books and stuff lined up to, like, start reading. And, like, I'm shite at reading. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to keep myself busy in a way that I feel like I'm actually doing something because I want to do it as opposed right. to just doing something for the sake of it. Right. There's a difference from I'm, being, like, distracted and actually engaging with something. Yeah, totally. Like, um, I get that it's totally different for everyone. Like, mm. I'm absolutely obsessed with Animal Crossing just now and... To somebody, they might be thinking, like, that's a total waste of time and that that's not something productive, but it's something productive for me because it chills me out, it relaxes yeah. me, and it gives me something to work on over time. And to me, like, that's a different brand of productivity that is familiar, but is applicable to the time period that we're in now. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, yeah. no, I totally get what you're saying, yeah. What about you, though? How are you keeping? Um... That's a good question. I feel like I have been busy, but I don't know what I've actually been doing to stay busy. Mm-hmm. Um, like you, I have been reading a lot more. Although I've already read, I, I liked reading anyway, so that's not really changed. It's just like I've upped it a few increments. Um, cool. I started writing. Um, I started painting. I'm really, I re- I'm not good at painting, so I hate that. I don't like it. I hate doing things I'm not good at, so I don't like doing that. Um, would you rather just be good at something from the get go, or would you stick with something you don't like until you get good at it? Well, hmm. Oh, that's a great question. Oh, because like obviously it's fantastic, like being great at something from the get go, mm. now because then you get the joy out of it straight away. But then you don't get to experience the joy of learning as much as you would if you were pished to begin with. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I feel like with painting, every time I try and paint, 
I, I, I just want to create exactly what my, my mind sees. Right. And because I can't do that, it annoys me. But with the drawing, I'm all right at drawing, so I can uh -huh. sort of create something close. I okay. So I'm okay. already like I have like I feel like I have the uh, the uh, foundation for drawing. So I'd right. work on that until I was like, wow, I'm good at drawing. But with painting, I'm like I can never learn. I will never be able to be good at painting. I <laughs> suck so bad. Like you just got to accept defeat from the beginning. It's just like yeah. I'm shy. So what's even the point? And I don't even enjoy it, so I don't see the point. Hey, but at least you've kind of gave it a go because yeah. like now is a fantastic time for people to kind of take on new things because as scary and as unpredictable of a time that we are in just now it's great that we actually have a lot of time in our hands to actually invest in things that we might not normally do absolutely yeah i totally agree with that i've had uh, so i've been talking to so many people and so many people have been saying like they've taken the time to like learn a language or cool. take up photography or Stuff like that, and I'm like, yes, this is this is awesome. I love that people are actually like, like not overbearing themselves with work, but taking this time to like sort of learn and hone skills and stuff like that. I'm really into that. It's just nice that people are kind of like actually getting to do what they want to do. Yeah. To end, but it's just nice that like I don't know, people are kind of cultivating in a sense like something that they actually we'd like to enjoy that they might not normally get the chance to. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I say I'm enjoying this. I, I'm, I feel like I might be in the small like group of people who are actually enjoying this more than they were enjoying life before. Like, yeah, this is pretty good. Like, are you still at work? Uh, no, I've been on furlough leave for about, about two weeks or something now. Right. And but like, but I'm still technically I've still been doing like work on the on the back burner and that. Right. But it's not taking like mad amount of time up. Nah, no really. It's been things like um marking up documents and like delivering stuff mm -hmm. like in my free time and that. Right. And, like it's literally just been simple things like that, which is which is fine and it means that I'll be prepared for when I go back, but at the same time it's kinda just like when do we go back? Mm -hmm. How time can I do I actually need to put into this like mm -hmm. Am I going to be sinking heaps of time into something that I might not actually be able to hand over, like, for months? Mm, yeah. I don't know. Like, the, the thing that really, really gets me about isolation right now is that folk are so used to going to work, coming to home, eating their dinner, watching TV, going to bed, and repeat, 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 repeat. But now that people are being specifically told, stay at home, yeah. people are like, nah, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like they're they're choosing to go against like what the government's saying and I totally get it. It's there's that whole idea that people are just like, Oh yeah, fuck the government and stuff like that <laughs> and like fuck Boris and shit like that. But at the same time it's kinda just like a lot of folk are kinda just choosing to be selfish to that extent that instead of staying home like they normally would that they're used to, they're kinda wanting to take this opportunity to do all the stuff that they might not have the time to do usually but they're choosing to do it all outside when they could be doing it inside yeah. and they're not putting anyone at risk but they're just stars all yeah it doesn't really to rebel against the government right now doesn't make any impact on the government it makes impact yeah. on us it makes impact on the people around us um but yeah i totally agree with you it's not worthwhile it's, there's so much that people have put off in life because they've been so busy that they could yeah. use like they could use the time now to do that but yeah. they don't. You, you're right. They're going outside and wasting time out there, and instead of like, I don't know. you're just putting more people at risk in that, and that's yeah. what really, really gets me. Is like people are completely and utterly aware of that Italy was like having like a thousand people die a day, and now the UK is essentially in that position right yeah. now, where the, the the daily death toll like rose to three hundred and no nine hundred and thirty eight the other day, and folk are aware of it, but just don't seem to give a shit. And mm. like, I don't really understand how people can choose to be that selfish. Yeah. It is a, a strange time, Ren. It's definitely a strange time. Um, but you, how are you finding it in, in comparison to before going into isolation? How am I finding it? Wait, Did you find the transition hard? I didn't find the transition hard because like, I worked for myself like two years. 
a number of years ago and quite a lot of the time I had to work from home. Right. So like um I'm like semi used to it and I don't know, I kinda feel like I'm I'm split right down the middle of being like introverted and extroverted. So like staying at home is fine for me as long as I get to do my own thing and I'm working on something and I'm being productive and that. But then at the same time I'm kinda just like like um I was sat in my kitchen yesterday with like my head in my hands just like I want to do this, 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 and this, but I can't do that because, like, I need to go outside and there is a cat screaming in the background. <laughs> but, like, um, no, like, I, I think I've been fine with the transition in that, even with, like, um, even with feeling as anxious as I normally do in that, I feel like I've actually kind of coped with it as well as I possibly could. Mm. Yeah. But I can understand that, like, a lot of folks' mental health are, is like really struggling right now because a lot of folks need to go out every single day in order to kind of like break that cycle of like feeling like shit every single day lying yeah. in their beds and that. And, but personally, I think I'm doing all right with it. Like I don't, I don't really mind. I kind of just get on with it to an extent. Yeah, that uh, that idea of like, like people always say, "Oh, my dream job would to be get paid to do nothing." Right, so yeah. I mean, just get paid to do nothing. That's effectively the position some people are actually in. Like that's that's exactly the position I'm in. I'm getting paid to do nothing right now. I'm in the exact same position as well. Like, I've, been told, I've been told like, like <laughs> you are employed and you are getting paid, but you are required not to work at this point. And it's like that, that doesn't seem like a bad deal to me. Yeah, I'm like okay. Oh yeah. I'm okay with that. That sounds good to me. Yeah, like Thank I'm, you. I'm glad to be in that position. I'm glad to be privileged enough to be there. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. I, I can't really complain about it. Um, but I suppose it's hard to sort of see from the other perspective for people that are in that position where they've just been like laid off or they've lost their job or mm-hmm. they're they're I don't know in that sort of situation where that's it. or people who are um, uh, have their own businesses. I don't know how they're really how they can cope through this kind of situation. There's a lot of places that are like um, there's like a couple of places that like we really really enjoy like um, Grow Urban's a plant place mm. that like we love going to and we've just started like ordering from them online since they op- they opened like an online business to mm. kind of help themselves get through this time and that and like you could deem that as being like a non essential purchase but to me it feels pretty essential because it's support it's supporting small businesses yeah exactly this time. Yeah. And then you've got other like places like coffee shops and everything and like they're doing like takeaway or like there's a lot of places that are still open which is mad but just in a in a different aspect. Yeah, I totally get what you're saying. That was good timing because my next question was going to be uh, how do you find it being sort of like enclosed in an area with your significant other where you can't leave if you need to leave or you're constantly together which might not be a problem. I'm just curious of the answer. Say nice things. Say nice things. Um, Ina and I spend a lot of our time together anyway. So if anything, I feel like I feel that Ina and I spend in a little bit more time together. Like I, I'm, I'm not really having an issue with it at mm. all. Like I, it's, I'm not even just saying that because she's sat in the other room and I'll get battered. <laughs> it's, it's more a case that um, I think that we're quite compatible as it is and mm. like. We've, we kind of know when to give each other space and when to kind of let each other focus on different things and that and we don't have to constantly do everything together it's not like when when like couples are working constantly and they don't get to see each other so they've got to mm-hmm. make sure that every moment in time is spent doing something together like it's still nice to like have date nights and stuff like that and go for walks every single day and that like that's all great and that bit it's just kind of understanding that just because we're in the same space all the time doesn't necessarily mean that we have to spend every single waking moment together in the same space. Yeah. Like, you can still be in the same space, but you just can be in different areas of that space doing your own thing and that. And, like, I, I have no I have no issue with that at all. Like, I think I've gotten quite lucky with Ina, to be honest. But I see folk on Twitter and that that are having absolutely horrendous times with their partners yeah, and that, yeah. all, like, absolutely stupid stuff, being like, oh... <laughs> Declan ate the last pack I watched it's Sam Tampin and it's like <laughs> yeah. okay sand that was sort of like the catalyst for me asking that question things like that I've seen so much content mm-hmm. of just people struggling through this thing because of things like that 
But then you can't even like you you can't even have like the standard normie response to be like oh dump him sis and it's like well you can't because these are in the same space. You just, just have gonna... to kill him really. That's it. Ah, it's just like oh well you've just got to just you know, fucking fling him out the window and I hope the virus does not get him. Right. On a more serious note, actually, it's unbelievable the statistics of uh, domestic violence right now and how it's. I think it. I read just it was yesterday that. It, over the last three weeks, it's up, it's went up in Scotland by twenty percent. It's just insane, isn't yeah. it? And that yeah. shows that. I, I mean, what does it show? Does it show that, like, people are inherently just bad? Does it show that so many people are so incompatible that, it, like, can only be resolved, me, like, through violence? What is? Why is this happening? Why is this so prevalent? Um, I think there's a number of different factors and. I think that the common conception of the whole term safe space is that the majority of people's safe spaces are their homes, but I think this is kind of just like a, a knock-on effect of the fact that not everyone's safe space is their home. Mm-hmm. Like, if the violence is going up in that, like, a lot of people are now being trapped in a situation that they don't want to be trapped in, and that's where, like, people's workplaces and actually going out for the day or going and visiting family and friends and that, like, becomes their safe space, and I think the the toll that being told you cannot go out and do what you normally do is having on people is kind of pushing people to some some extent and, to, and almost to their limits in a sense as well. And there's a I think there's a lot of people that don't really know how to kind of deal with their issues personally, so they kind of take it out on others. Not that that's what everyone is doing, but I think there is a minority that do not know how to process their feelings or how to talk to their partners about these things that they resort to nothing but violence Mm. and i also think the whole stockpiling thing as well hasn't really helped as well because i think the whole issue with stockpiling is that oh it's great that you're going to be able to have all this food and all these products and that in the long term but i think that in order for people to stockpile they've got to invest a lot of money in that straight away and i think there's going to be a lot of people that will be suffering from money issues Mm. And then there'll also be people that are stockpiling um, alcohol and that as well. And mm. there's a lot of people that don't know how to kind of control, like, control the amount of alcohol that they consume and that when they're not actually in a social place yeah. where money becomes a limit where it's like, oh, well, you're getting cut off at the bar or you don't have enough money to actually afford to buy more drinks and that. But when you're at home and every day blends into one, I think there's a lot of folk that will just keep drinking and keep drinking and keep drinking and I don't know I just think there, there's a lot of different factors to consider but I definitely think the substance abuse is definitely one that is potentially being looped over at the moment yeah you're I think you're definitely right there it's it's so hard to sort of gauge what you're doing and where you're at when everything's flipped upside down right now yeah it's a really yeah it's, I, honestly the only way to describe it it's just a strange time right now um, I hate to jump on the bandwagon of like oh, all these like like universities were saying oh no you can't you can't do all this online and work was like oh no you can't work from home and then as soon as this happened everybody was like oh no we can do that that's fine that's easy to do and the entire <laughs> world just shifted within like a week everything could be done online like I, ju- I just think it's mind blowing how how this is this is probably going to be to some degree the next step and civilization where we really have to do things online and we take advantage of online um, and yeah. the platforms that exist and I think in a sense that might be a good thing it might be as I said like the next step in this sort of evolution of, of mankind which is so fascinating to watch and to be a part of but it's scary at the same time because it is something it's like war when when war occurs afterwards what we're left with is mostly Good people, good communities, great culture, and new technology. And I feel like this is going to be the same, or I hope it will be. I think there's something kind of has to come from this that's going to not necessarily redeem the whole situation, but it's going to there's going to be something that will come from this that like we're going to remember in a positive mm-hmm. way. Yeah, absolutely. It's just it's just kind of waiting for for it to happen and see what it is. It's just a shame that the majority of the stuff that we're seeing right now is obviously negative press. Like, mm. with the number of deaths and that, like, understandable yeah. that that's been shared because we need the world to understand that. But it's how 
how particular information is being shared and construed that is kind of forming a lot of negativity. Like we've got um, when Italy were having a thousand people die a day, UK press was saying things like, oh, it's an absolute horror show over there. Look at the state of them and that. Mm. And now that we've managed to have our death toll raised to 938 a day, um, the UK press is like, we've got this under control. Don't you worry about a thing. And it's like, how can you take the same situation in different places and make it seem totally fine in one place and then make an absolute horror show in another? It's, It's just really, really strange to see how information is being is being shown in different parts of the world and how it's being processed and then it just obviously there's a lot of people that will read that sort of information and just think you know what that's a good point Mm -hmm. like how you're getting people that are getting upset about um they've not done any reading on where the coronavirus can actually come from but they're completely not really convinced that it came from eating bats in china and that's it Mm -hmm. like there's they think that that is it but really there's so much more to it I don't know, I could, I could go on about this for like ages. I, th- and I thought it was just some guy that you had that. I'm confused. I, like that, that's <laughs> what a lot of the common misconception is. The only reason that, I, like what I think is that a lot of people are under the impression that it came from a bat because before all this kicked off, this was when there was three viral videos that went up on Twitter and Reddit and everything of um, Chinese, Japanese, and I think it was like Southeast, Southeast Asia there were like from a from a couple countries in that sort of vicinity and there was one where it was a a viral youtuber that eats um that eats like asian culture and like eats a yeah, eats a like southeast asian cuisine and it's the sort of things what it's like um like octopus tentacles and they'll mm-hmm. she pours like salt and like vinegar over it and then they start like squirming and moving that so for a lot of people in Western society, they view that and they just think like, "Oh, that's disgusting," because that's not something that we are, that we've had normalized for us. And then there was also another video of um, somebody eating, and somebody was eating like, um, what was it again? They were eating um, the soup that had like the whole bat in it that had been fried, and everyone was like, "Oh, that's absolutely disgusting!" Like Western society doesn't understand that it. it's mm-hmm. a delicacy over in in China. And then there was another one that I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think there was a lot that was building up to this in terms of press in order for us to kind of point the finger at China and just be like, you know what, like, you've chucked it, you've fucked it. Right. It was a lot of, like, Chinese foods for mingers, and they were like, let's jump on that. It was basically just that, and that's what really, really gets me, because there's a lot of misinformation that folk have just seen viral videos and thought, that's it, that's where it came from. And the only thing that kind of supports that the virus has potentially came from bats is that 96% of the DNA um, that comes from the virus is comparable to what's in bats, but then no one talks about how 94% of the DNA in the, that builds up the virus is also 94% of the DNA contained in armadillos. And also um, that the virus comes from transporting live cattle. Like... Okay, so let me get this right. So... The virus was created by armadillos. Folkers, <laughs> oh no, uh, folk are saying that I'm it's pang- pangolins, sorry, not armadillos. Um, 94% of the DNA that is shared between the virus and pangolins is like 94%, and then it's 96% for bats. But then there's no conclusive proof that if you actually consume these animals that you can contract the virus, but the way that the virus is... Um, has normally been um, transferred from anim- like bovine to bovine and animal to animal is through... Um, poor animal agriculture and poor um, cattle and livestock containment on farms in areas of, of Asia and Southeast Asia. Right. So it's usually spread from animal to animal as they're transporting these animals because there's a lot of animals over in Southeast Asia and China, etc. that are like exported into Europe, etc. Yeah, and folk just seem to think like, oh, somebody's ate a bat over in China and took a flight here, and then just started it, and it's all of a sudden it's parasitical bio warfare. And uh, it just it really really bothers me that like it makes me sound like I know everything, but this is just from what like I've read and that. Mm. But I think it's a lot better to actually do some sort of like conclusive reading that can actually support your argument and your thought process instead of just being like, I watched some boy eat a bat on Twitter, so that means I'm right. 
So effectively, in layman's terms, it's just a lot of uh, miscommunication, confused information, and in general, just it was easy to jump on that sort of like, this is what it was, and everybody yes. was too like clueless or or ignorant to go. Hmm, maybe that's yeah. not quite right. They were just like, all right, that's good enough for me. It is a lot easier to bandwagon something because you've yeah. already got a number of people behind you to basically, like, if you jump on the bandwagon, you blend into that bandwagon. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants think, to be the one against the bandwagon. Exactly. Against yeah, a thousand like, voices I, or ten thousand voices. I think that we spoke about this before in, like, a previous podcast that we've done where it's that whole mindset of, um, of like, a, I mind getting shown, like, this video during, like, my mental health training. And what it was was that there was, on a beach, there was one person that was up dancing and everyone was like, oh, look at that, like, absolute weirdo dancing by mm. himself. But then someone else goes and dances with him and then all of a sudden everyone's looking at the second person being like, what an absolute loser. Why are they doing that? They're just in there to take the piss on that. But then as a third person goes in, folk are like, oh, something's starting here. Mm. Someone's already taken the first hit and somebody's already taken the second hit. So that now means that everyone can converge on that position now and they will blend seamlessly so they don't actually suffer any of the humiliation or like the piss take or the questioning or anything like that. And I think that that whole concept of bandwagoning is is so prevalent and popular for people that if they see other people doing something, it's easy to jump on that because they're, you, you, like naturally there's that whole primal instinct that you're safer in numbers. Mm, yeah. That's such a great, like, um, I don't even know what it is. Great theory. It's not really an analogy, is it? Or a metaphor. It's just a great theory. The idea of like explaining to someone that yeah, that that first guy looks like an idiot, that second guy looks like an idiot, but at some point that like they're they are the majority and then you're the idiot. And like it's I mean, I don't know what it really shows us in the sense, like, does it show that we should all just jump on the bandwagon? <laughs> or does it show that it's we should just... It's hard to know what it actually things? proves. It just, it, I think it just proves that um, regardless of what the information is, if there are numbers, then people will feel more comfortable with that information because they know that there's a lot of people that feel comfortable with that mm. information as well. And if others feel comfortable with it, then what's to say that they won't feel comfortable? Yeah. That is good, I like it. I, I remember you telling me the first time, I, I just think about it quite a lot, actually. I think, I think it's it's a really, really I, yeah. like, that whole, that whole concept is, I think, is really interesting because it applies to so much stuff, it's yeah. unreal. What I take it as is, like, basically it doesn't really matter what you do because there's always going to be some, some sort of small group of people who think they're the majority and they're the ones that are probably the ones judging. But if you just go and do your own thing you'll probably get someone that joins in and has fun as well. So just yeah. live life the way you want to live life, man. Absolutely. Just do your thing, man. Just enjoy. enjoy. <laughs> this is actually something that I want to speak to you about because I actually like your view on things and stuff. Have you, I've seen a lot of stuff on Twitter that's like, uh, you see how folk are doing these 30-day song challenges right now? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's great because it's keeping people busy and, like, people are sharing things that they enjoy in that. And it's nice to kind of see people actually just generally doing things. Like, like the whole the whole press-up challenge thing that we did in that. Mm. Like, it's fun, it's engaging, it's stuff that people can actually do to kind of keep themselves busy and preoccupied mm. in that. But then you've got tweets going, like, massively viral on that. People being like, no one cares about your 30-day song challenge. No one cares if you can do 10 press-ups. And it's like, well, obviously you do, because yeah. you're chatting about it, you yeah. dopey bastard. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just, it, like, that sort of stuff winds me up, because we're in a situation right now that a lot of people are very, very unclear of how to act in that, but we've still got people out there, like, kind of going about with this high school attitude of, like, oh, it's not cool to do that, and it's like, man, like, we're in a situation where... We're being told to stay inside. We're not doing the stuff that we're normally used to doing. We can't just nip out for a coffee like we normally would in that. Just let people enjoy things. Like, who cares if, like, oh, th this person's not cool because they're wearing Nike shoes with Adidas. It's like, who cares? Does it matter? Just my, enjoy uh, stuff. Be yeah. happy. My biggest pet peeve in life is that is those situations where someone does something and then someone like makes them feel embarrassed by it yeah. so they don't do that thing again i hate that 
Like it's, that is it's, the worst type of person to do that. Absolutely, it's just unnecessary and it's unfair because you could be spoiling something for someone that oh, yeah. they've potentially just discovered it or like they've they've realised that they're actually quite good at something. But oh, it's like why would you want to be good at something that people think little of? Like maybe you're still at that stage where you generally do care what people think of you on that. And it just sucks. Yeah, I'm totally with you on that. Like we I should, did some, yeah. Oh. The person who's like belittling someone because of that, I, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> that Joys are working from home, great right? Great content. <laughs> you want to come say hi, no? You're not feeling it. Hi, right, okay, fair enough, whatever. Oh, camera shy. Yeah. No paparazzi. Just trying to figure out what she's wanting to do right now. I've cleared out like all my storage units that like I've not done in like since I moved in actually. Mm. But there's like exploring all them because it's something new and different for her. Maybe I should tweet about her shaming her for doing something different. Um, what's this? Oh yeah, so like, what does that? What does that person achieve from like belittling someone? Is it, does it make them feel like sort of like they're on a, a higher level? Do you know what I mean? They've leveled yeah. up because they've pushed someone down. I hate. I just cannot. It's a stupid. There's nothing to gain from it. Like, I, like. <laughs> In a, in a material sense there is nothing but all that they're really get, potentially getting is like what like a couple thousand folk like clicking a digital button saying like ha ah, I agree with this and then it's just it becomes a collective couple thousand of people that are mm. absolute gimps that don't want people to enjoy things who cares man I mean if we if we actually broke down the statistics I bet someone's already done this like, like everybody's already done everything on the internet but if you broke yeah. down the statistics I would believe that most good positive content gets rated higher, gets more retweets, gets more likes, gets more views yeah. than negative content. Because uh, our, like and it sounds like I'm like kinda hard to believe because we love controversy and we kinda love hate to some degree and that's why the news always gets so much clicks and that's why like things like people celebrity deaths are like almost a sensation in like this generation but I still believe that if we had to really take everything that's positive content everything that's negative content the positive content would blow the negative content out of the water for views and Absolutely. likes and stuff um, because people, people just love, love controversy people love controversy people love good things people love like mm-hmm. oh there's a nice video of someone doing something nice to someone that was less fortunate or something people love that yeah. Um, yeah, that's weird. I have a question for you. Um, okay. And well, my question is, like, I have a uh, context for it before I start the question. Okay. And the context is, I think if I was in your situation right now, I would probably not be happy. And my reason for it is because, how do you like? Where do you go? You can't go outside. Like, where do you go when you go outside? Do you go outside? Um, I would go out for maybe like an hour, hour and a half a day. And where do you go? We either go for a spinny in the car or, or we will walk down like the water leaf or something like that. Okay, like, that doesn't bad actually. I'd be fine. So like, that sort of thing's fine because like we're just outside the city. We're like, we're like literally just outside the city but we're within walking distance of the city. We can walk into the centre in about half an hour but then we've got so many cycle paths and woods and everything that like mm. we've got a lot of options of places to go in that but I think a lot of people are also using those same amenities so like it's almost like you can't really do that because there's so many people using them and there's mm. this whole two meter guideline going on so it's like I want to I want to be able to like go down the cycle path and that but I can because there's so many people there yeah I get but, you um, I, I don't I don't really mind my situation. I think that I'm quite privileged in that sense. Like I've got lot lots of options of like where I can go and what I can do and that and Yeah. Yeah. Well that's why I sort of said that statement first because I was unsure of your situation exactly. But mm-hmm. I've spoken to a lot of people that live in like flats and apartments and stuff like that in the city centre and they're just having an awful time because they can't get outside and they can't like they're living alone, so they have no one to talk to, and I just feel like that situation. I mean, you're obviously not living alone, um, yeah. and based sounds pretty awesome as well. But it's, I think like the means of the means of communication right now is it's the sort of stuff that we use every single day that we completely and utterly take for granted. Mm. Like 
like texting and stuff like that. Like you still see folk that all get like dead upset being like, "Oh, this person has left me in red and stuff like that." But now more than ever, like we've got the means of actually communicating digitally. And yeah. We shouldn't really be taking it for granted. We should realise that we've actually got like something super powerful at our fingertips as it is, yeah. and actually make proper use of it. I hate texting. I love FaceTime, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm like I'd, I'd rate it FaceTime up here, phoning mm-hmm. here, and then texting is like like below mm-hmm. ground. I hate texting. Below ground. <laughs> like texting is the worst format of communication. But FaceTime, I mean, sometimes FaceTime I prefer over non FaceTime like actual in- interaction because I can scroll through Twitter while on FaceTime. I no like one you knows. Do other things at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Nobody knows what I'm doing. I'm naked <laughs> from the bottom down, like Greg. Like you don't know that. Like, but if we were in, like, I've not showered in three weeks. But if there we was meant in, to be. Like, there was meant to be a there. conference call this morning for like my work, like a business <laughs> update and that. And it was at nine o'clock, and I got up at half eight. I washed my hair, and I'm still in pajamas the whole way down and that, like wearing like fluffy socks and all that rubbish and that. And then the meeting got cancelled. I thought, ah, oh, I got dressed for nothing. Like, I, got <laughs> I got dressed. I got dressed for nothing. That's great. Um, but yeah, but I, I, t- love, I, I love. I that. see what you're meaning, though. There is a lot of people that are really, really struggling, like yeah. living in flats and that right now. But there's a lot of people that are loving it. Yeah, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm thriving. I feel great. See, like, my, I would feel in your situation is one that I'd struggle with because I know that like you live like in a wee village, like wee village, no, actually, wee town. I live nowhere. Yeah, see, like, that Population, to me... Population, my family. <laughs> we, we, um... I was speaking to, um... Jack, Andy, and Mac when they were doing, like, mm. the first Nest live stream and that. Shout out to uh, Nest, Cam. They, they, were, they were talking about podcasts and that, and then I brought up just being like, oh, why don't you just, like, do a live stream with, like, Tom or something? And they were just like, oh, yeah, that'd be class. And they started talking about how much of a nightmare it was getting to you. And I was like, oh, yeah, cl- Klimpy population minus three plus Tom. <laughs> it's like yeah. Tom and his cows. Yeah, when I tell people that I live in the middle of nowhere, they're like, ah, yeah, sure. And I'm like, no, no, like, really, you, you probably don't get more in the middle of nowhere, but still in the middle of somewhere than here. Yeah. Um, I quite like where I live because it is the middle of nowhere. There's no yeah. no annoying neighbours, but uh, you also it's like a half hour drive to Edinburgh, half hour drive to Glasgow. Yeah. Like I feel that's pretty good. I quite like it. Like ugh, living out in the middle of nowhere right now would be like just terrifying for me. Virus or no virus, like I couldn't do it. Mm. See, I feel like I'm I'm in a way more fortunate position because I've been like I, I like I can't really ride a bike. <laughs> Twenty one, I can't really ride a bike. I like but. Okay. I've been learning how to ride a bike properly. I can just do that. Like I've got anywhere I can just go. I got basically. I can just walk for miles and not come across <laughs> anyone or any house or anything, any civilization. I love that. Um, I mean, I quite like. I quite like this. Like I feel like in a city, you're always burdened with that idea of like you're at, you're around people. Mm-hmm. Like I've I- been out into like the real world once or twice now uh to go shopping um and i've never felt more uncomfortable in my life like what being in the shops yeah i was honestly getting lightheaded because i was breathing so lightly because i felt so anxious and i was like oh my god oh man that sucks i just feel so weird and like i I was with my mom and we're wearing masks and we're wearing gloves we're like we're not we're taking this seriously we're not touching anything we're like wiping everything down in the car once we like came home it just felt really strange. I don't know if we were like taking it a bit too serious, but it's like, I mean, if our house doesn't have it, can. and we can I don't stop think there's it anything you can take not seriously. Just yeah. now, like if folk are dying, folk are dying. Like we've got to take this as seriously as we possibly can. Exactly. Uh, man, my parents are ancient. They're like a hundred. Like so, they're like most vulnerable. Yeah, they would. They they're like the type of people who are vulnerable to like a slippy step. Oh no. They're real old. They need to be protected. The sort of people that, like, I've fallen and can't get up out where it's actually applied to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you need, like, stair lifts and you need to get handles to go into the bath and that. What a shame. <laughs> Wait, have you, have you met my parents? <laughs> don't think so. No, they're not that old, actually. <laughs> no. Um, they're actually probably not even that vulnerable. But <laughs> no, not at all. They're just... 
they're just they're all to you the my dad can do a full front flip no my god <laughs> um <laughs> my but, dad can do three back flips but yeah they're they're uh i don't know like if we can prevent it from coming into the house or being around the house like we're just gonna do that yeah totally. in fact my dad told me yesterday he was like i like this like this is great we haven't been bothered for three weeks <laughs> i was like dad that's great that's great um, it's, it's, been a, it's been a nice chill time for quite a lot of people yeah. it's, it's a strange time that we're kind of we're in a global pandemic where like lives are at risk but we're also in a state of mind where we're getting to enjoy the things we don't normally get to yeah. enjoy God. Exactly. do you want to get out of that flower pot you absolute <laughs> little menace what are you doing I think for it's a good. lot of people they don't realise how much a distraction work is towards their underlying problems Mm-hmm. and things like that and then for a lot of people they didn't realize how much work was the stress and that yeah. was their underlying problem and it's really fascinating to see who's in who what camp and stuff like that um i know for a fact me and lucy are both two people who definitely do not enjoy work and we do not fit into the world of work very well yeah that's um, fair and we're really trying to take this time to like take a step back and think about right what's the plan here what are we going to do so we can try and just live the rest of our life without having to work and that's not like a a really possible thing but it's more possible now than ever you can Ah. like for anyone who has uh like uh an income based off of like something that doesn't rely on a physical location Mm -hmm. um or like somewhere you have to like an actual boss where you control what you do I guess like what the kind of like group of people that I that comes to mind for me is like people who are people who write books I guess Mm -hmm. they're they're pretty solid right now like they could still write books and get away with that Um, people who make like online content yeah they're nailing it absolutely Um, I wish I could monetize this podcast so I can just It'd be do amazing. that as well. Be, like, I, um, who else is it that do really well? Um, what I'm feeling is going to happen during this in terms yeah. of all the content and that is I think there's going to be a couple um, live streamers <laughs> that will suddenly pop up and become really mm. popular. Makeup artists are another oh, one. Yeah. I believe that the beauty community online is going to get a couple new faces. Um, I think there'll be someone that will, like basically rise up like in the vlogging community as well because there's going to be people that will be like oh look at how these people are spending their time in in isolation and that and i don't know i think the video game streaming right now is definitely something that's gonna like pop off and a lot of people are gonna do really well in that yeah and then graphic designers and then people that make online zines Mm, definitely they're they're gonna be the ones that i think are gonna really pop off yeah absolutely 100 percent and the Volumes same, Podcast, I hear that's doing quite well, just check that out. Yeah, the Volumes Podcast, yeah, that's definitely one that's to check. Blow up. Um, I think that as great as it is now to do all these creative things, I think that competition now more than ever is going to be a lot more fierce. Mm. You're not going to have people that are spending like eight hours a day in a workplace and that where they can't actually contribute to like an online platform or anything like that because yeah. they're too busy working for the man. The man. <laughs> system. Fuck the man. Fuck the system. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know. It's a strange time that we live in right now. I, I read that uh, AdSense has dropped the, the, the amount you'd make of YouTube videos because the amount of companies that want to invest in ads right now has dropped because there's much less like need for certain services. And mm-hmm. like certain products aren't selling very well under this situation, so it's weird because you'd think like the people creating content have more time to make content, but the content they're making is actually worth less. Uh, less than during the time. Yeah. So yeah, that makes sense actually. Yeah. Um, the companies trying to protect themselves. Under that same article, though, it said that Pornhub is paying out twice as much or something like that for for their videos. So. Guys, if you want to make content and you're of <laughs> age and you, it's consensual, there you go. Exactly. That's, some, a, that's something to invest time into. 
couple of videos of you shagging yourself or shagging somebody else with their consent. There you go. And I've seen more and more people though are making OnlyFans accounts yeah. and that. Crack on if that's what you want to do. Then like fight on. Greg, don't lie. We were literally talking about this before the podcast started, and you were yeah, like, like if, <laughs> if, if I had confirmation that I was tidy and I could get the police, like folk that would like want to subscribe before I even like invest the time and effort into it, then crack on, make the money, do it. Confirmation, you're tidy, Greg. Get on. Ah, no sound. You just, you just <laughs> want to like all oh, this. <laughs> <laughs> what would your uh, OnlyFans handle be? Um. Oh, that's a good one, actually. I feel like you can still go by to feel healed. Yeah, maybe to feel healed. But I, don't, I don't even know. Ah, oh, I don't even know. It would need to be something sassy. Or something stupid, I don't know. I don't know. Comment below. <laughs> Comment below what you think Greg's OnlyFans handle should be. But Lord, I don't know. And, uh, Whoa. Big butler, yeah, big butler. There we go. There we go. Yeah, we'll uh, go with that. You, you, I'm gonna be number one subscriber. I better get. Yeah. You're gonna be the only subscriber. Gutted for you. It's just gonna be pictures of my ass every single. Oh day. yeah, how rubbish is that? Oh, <laughs> all, all the money. Um, gonna be invested. Yeah, just um, fifty pound a day. There you go, money, money. So, other than promoting your OnlyFans, is there anything else you want to promote? Not that my platform is really that big of a um, promotion, oh, let's be honest. I do actually, yeah. Um, shout out uh, Volumes for being great people. Um, a friend of mine has actually set up a page on Instagram called The Will to Persist. And essentially what it is, it's, um, it's a collection of people's achievements and reflections and our collective will to persist. So what it is, it's um, he's collecting like like two or three photos of the people that want to contribute and then you talk about who you are, what your hobbies and interests are, what your proudest moment is and what do you not give yourself enough credit for and what helps you feel positive. And I think that's, it's a really, really, it's a really, really cool idea. And I think so far he's actually done really, really well with it. I still need to contribute to myself, but it's just nice seeing how many different achievements and different things that people are proud of and I think it's also great as well that everyone's proudest moment is so different mm. like everything from leaving toxic relationships to people graduating to people like being able to buy their first car or something like that or being able to like move out or be able to like start working for their family business or something and it's it's just really really interesting just to see what people are all proud of and I think it's I think it's fantastic I love it um, if you're watching this on YouTube, it will be linked in the description. Um, and if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, do you want to say the handle again? Just so people remember. Uh, the will to persist. There you go, check it out. Um, uh, anything else? Yep. The things that I can think of to promote would probably be um, the Nest podcast and the Nest Instagram. The guys that you interviewed yes. not so long ago, Jack, Andy, and Mac. Great guys there. Yeah, great talk about video games and the only other thing that I would like to talk about is the filming the filming crew that I am part of Daitan Films since we are not actually filming shows or anything and I was meant to be filming a bunch of bands that I have adored since I was a child um, I don't get the opportunity to do that anymore because all shows are essentially cancelled right now mm. um, David who runs the whole page he has um, started editing and putting together a bunch of his interviews and he's just went and put his first one up on David Tan videos oh. where like he is it on David Tan videos? No, it's um that's an absolute heap of rubbish um, if you've <laughs> got him on Patreon you'll see on Die Tan Films that he's put up his first interview that is with, what's his name again? It's not you, it's not you it's not you, I can't remember his name but it's the guy that was in um, Payday there and they basically talk about like what's like your your craziest most enjoyable show and there's clips of like people like moshing and there's like fire and things are getting thrown about and stuff and like it's a really really interesting in-depth interview and david does a fantastic job of actually editing it all together it's great seeing him do something different as well than just filming bands it's nice to get to know these people yeah, yeah. great community i love it 
Yeah. Okay. Um, check that out as well. Anything else? Do you want to plug yourself a little bit? Um, yeah, plug me for the third time on your channel. Um, um, I run a page called The Feel Healed, which talks Boom. about straight edge culture, veganism, and Boom. mental health. Boom. And the whole yeah, journey. Essentially, yeah. I'm talking about the Triforce of good times. Um, I talk about those three things in depth because there are three things that have effectively affected my life massively or have changed my life for the better. And yeah, if you fancy looking at like cool stuff that I make or you want to listen to me talk about cool stuff like talking about like animal welfare or you want to hear me talk about um, um, just, yeah, just cool stuff. Stuff yeah, and things um, and stuff. <laughs> and I'm also planning a number of things myself in order to do in isolation, but it's just a case of actually doing it. Mm. That, um, like I want to record podcasts myself, talk about mental yeah. health. I want to start putting together a zine that is a combination of Ooh. mental health and veganism topics. And I also That's want, and I also want to start like doing a similar sort of thing to the world process, where like I actually ask people questions and I like take photos and stuff like that. That's also a really similar thing to um, Project Calm that Jack Allen is going to be doing as well. That's something you can link as well, Project yep, Calm. Absolutely. Boom. Similar sort yeah. of thing that I'm doing already, but it's more going to be text-based. Right. That's really interesting. But we'll see what comes from Jack, who knows. Um, once all those things are on the go, when you've got your zine on the go and your uh, podcast on the go we should do another podcast and recap what's going on what you're thinking yeah. and all that stuff but yeah thank I you very much for coming on no problem cheers for having me as always um, uh, before we go one final question how long do you think isolation will last and how long do you think you can cope and be as productive and positive as you are right now um, I think isolation will go on until December I am. I am convinced. I believe that. <laughs> I believe that we will be told to stay in isolation until December. And if I am wrong, then you can just be. Like, but then at the same time, <laughs> if um, if it does go on until December, then I'll go on the next podcast to you. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe that I will be able to remain productive as long as I, if I make a start in these things that I've mentioned to you, I believe that I could stay productive until then. No problem. But then if I don't, then I will lose my mind and I will play Animal Crossing mm. until I die. Um, I think it's going to end by July because I'm hopeful. Cool. Um, and because I want to move to Spain in August. So I hope cool. it's gone by July. Um, so fingers crossed. But if you're right, then I don't think I will keep saying... Actually, I think it'll be all right. <laughs> I think yeah, it'll be all we'll right. See we'll see what happens, because like, it's, it's an incredibly unpredictable time, so... Yeah. And, and... But yeah, thanks again. Uh, everybody, check out Greg's stuff. Awesome stuff. Very creative. Very awesome. Awesome, awesome. And creative and awesome. Thank you for watching and listening, and thanks, Greg. Bye.